Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at, in Louisville, Kentucky, at St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master looking at the Word of God. Thank you so much for being with me this entire week as we've tried to unpack the serenity prayer, how to have peace when your life is going to pieces. And we basically, the, there are three lines to the prayer. So in your mind, you should have two categories. One category, the things I cannot change. I give those to God and I leave them alone. I give no energy, no emotions to the things I cannot change. Let me say it again. Do not give any emotions to the things you cannot change. Because if you give emotions to the things you cannot change, you will not have emotion for the, to, for the things that you can change. You only have a limited amount of emotion. You don't want to waste emotion on things you cannot change. So put into one category the things I cannot change and put into a ca another category the things that you can change. Now, of the three lines in the prayer, the things I can not change, one, line one, line two, the things I can change, and the third line, God give me the wisdom to know the difference. So there's three things you're requesting. Serenity for things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, wisdom to know the difference. So it's calling for serenity, courage, wisdom. That's the Trinity. Wisdom, courage, wisdom. Okay? Yeah, that's it. So you ask God, excuse me, serenity. And then you ask God for courage. And then you ask God for wisdom to know the difference between the things you can change and the things you cannot change. Of the three things, the three lines in the prayer, the most challenging is line three. Knowing how to differentiate what I can change and what I cannot change is important. Asking God, God, is this something I cannot change and I need to leave alone? Or God, is it something I can change, but I just don't want to change it? I'm using it as an excuse. I'm using and I'm putting it in a category that it does not belong. I can change it. I just don't have the courage. I just don't want to change it. I'm just making an excuse. And having the wisdom to know the difference and wanting God to give you the wisdom to know the difference is critically important. And it takes wisdom to know what you can change and what you cannot change. It takes wisdom. Of all the gifts that God can give us, perhaps there's no gift greater than the gift of wisdom. Remember Solomon, when Solomon became the king and God asked Solomon what you wanted. And Solomon said, God, because I have a lot of decisions to make, grant that I might have wisdom. And we're told that God was so excited about Solomon's request for wisdom. This is what it says. Give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased with Solomon, with, that Solomon had asked for wisdom. God was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. Verse 11. So God replied, because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for a long life or wealth or the death of your enemies, I will give you what you ask for. I will give you a wise and understanding heart such as no one else has had or ever will have. And I will give you what you did not ask for, riches and fame as a bonus. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. So Solomon asked for wisdom and God gave him wisdom. And what is wisdom? Wisdom is simply seeing things from God's perspective. How do you get wisdom? You ask for wisdom. But Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 says this, very important. Proverbs 9 and verse 10 uh, says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, what does that mean? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fear does not mean trembling. It does not mean I'm nervous about God. That's not what fear means. Fear means simply taking God seriously. God, I take you seriously. And to take God seriously is the beginning of wisdom. That's how you move into wisdom by taking God 
seriously. Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six says this, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. How can I have wisdom to know, for example, when I need to move on with my life? If this is something I can't do anything about. Well, let me give you some examples. Here's some areas in life, especially as it relates to relationships, when you know, hey, it's time to move on. One, you know it's time to move on when you're in a relationship or in a situation where you cannot express your opinion. When you have an opinion and people just won't listen to you, they won't hear you, and they're not paying any attention to you, then don't cast your pearls before swine. It's time to move on. Two, when words don't match actions. When you're in a situation where people are saying one thing, but their actions are not congruent with their words, it might be time to put that in the category where you say, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Three, when you're around people and you've been trying and trying and trying, and it is really depleting you of your own enthusiasm for life and the things that God has called you to do. Say, this is somebody, some situation I cannot change. It's time to move on. Four, you know it's time to move on when you have to be someone other than who you fundamentally are. When you've got to constantly alter who, who you are fundamentally as a person, your values. Well, it's time to move on. You can't, you know, you can't change that. It's time to move on. And five, you know it's time to move on when your health is suffering, when, when it's really affecting you because you're trying to change something or change somebody and it's just not working. It's time to put that person in the, I can't change this, I can't change them category and move on and redirect and refocus those energies on the things that you can change. What a powerful prayer. As we close, let's read it just one more time, the entire prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Give me the courage to change the things I can because I'm going to change some things in your, you're going to change some things in your life. Some people are not going to like it. So it's going to take courage and the wisdom to know the difference. Give me wisdom like you gave Solomon. And then Lord, help me to live one day at a time, enjoy one moment at a time. This is Saturday. Quit worrying about Sunday. Just deal with Saturday. Accepting, accept hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as he did, namely Jesus, the simple world as it is. Oh, we wish things were different, but you, you got to live life on life's terms. This is the way it is. You know, I wish it was different. Not, he says, not as I would have it, but as it is. Because the reason why people drink in AA will tell you is because they're trying to alter themselves because they can't alter their world instead of giving, asking God for the strength to deal with life as it is. Trusting that he will make all things right, like the scribble and the artist who makes a masterpiece from scribble. If I surrender to his will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him. And the word reasonably happy means that. There's, you're never going to have everything right in your life. And if you're waiting for everything is right, you'll, you'll be a frustrated person. But you can be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever and ever in the next. Amen. What a prayer. What a prayer. So let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your for your goodness to us and this wonderful prayer. And don't let us just say the prayer, help us to truly pray the prayer. And we know that we're praying the prayer when we live it out. Grant your people peace and serenity so that they can have peace when things in life are going to pieces. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Thank you so very much for being with me this entire week on the serenity prayer. Tomorrow is the Lord's day. We will gather for worship. I, I hope you'll join us uh, at SSC Live TV. Worship begins uh, at nine o'clock online. So I hope you'll join us online or if you're in Louisville or surrounding areas that you'll join us uh, at our various campuses at uh, on our Indiana campus uh, at 830 in Louisville at 930 and then our Hardin County campus at 1130. But if you're watching online, join us at nine o'clock at the pre-show with Miss Crystal Goodner Spratt. I hope you'll be with us tomorrow. But until that comes. Look, you stay peaceful, stay cool, and don't forget in the midst of COVID-19 to stay safe, stay sane, and don't forget that God is in control. Peace and blessings upon you. I'll see you in worship tomorrow.